Welcome to day 5 of the 12 Days of Anime, where I am not talking about anime, but instead of video games, and since it is day 5, I thought it would be a good idea to talk about my 5 games I played this year that I really liked. And no, I did not plan in advance, I had thought about this like half hour before I started writing this video. But yeah, I've had fun playing a lot of games this year on stream, both here on YouTube and on Twitch, so I figured... Why not take the time to just talk about them? Plus, I need something relatively simple to put together because I don't have time to do a lot of editing. Let's get into it. First, we have Danganronpa 2 Goodbye Despair. This game was something special. For those who don't know about Danganronpa, it's a visual novel series about students who are trapped and forced to play a killing game where they have to like kill another student without being caught to get out, so you use the main character to go around solving the murders and hoping that your entire class doesn't die by the end of the game. Fun, very wholesome, very filled with hope and despair. Yeah, Goodbye Despair is the name of the game. Yes. And specifically this time, the characters are trapped on a beautiful island where nothing is as it seems. And the murders here were really great and clever, and I love the mystery of trying to figure out who did it, why, and how did all the other pieces come together. There's some great parts here, just like, you have the characters acting insane, but are they trustworthy? Maybe the insane people are the ones that can be trusted the most. And maybe the most trustworthy people are actually the traitor. Yeah, fun times. Fun times. But there's a lot more to it, too, with the mystery of the world. What is going on with the world and the island and Monokuma and all the characters. And I love how it just adds on so much to the first game. And then sets up the final anime series, just bringing it all together. Yeah, I'm kind of sad that we didn't get an anime adaptation of this one. Though I actually think it works the best because there's no way they could do an anime right here. It is a great game though. Danganronpa as a whole is a lot of fun. Very weird and insane and, well, fun. Next on my list is Pokemon Rejuvenation. This is a fan game based off the Pokemon franchise. And while I liked Pokemon a lot as a kid, the new games just don't have the same appeal as the older ones do. Or at least for me. With Rejuvenation in particular, taking the battles to their limits. I love how the boss battles in here feel like puzzles you have to use all your knowledge of Pokemon together to beat. It is not as simple as you use water types to beat the fire types. Though I mean the fire gym is kind of easy. But there are so many different nuances to the system you have to take advantage of to win because those fights are not fair. And then the story too, it's great. To a point, it's like kind of standard, like you go around the region finding gems, defeating the evil team, saving everyone. But there's a lot to it here. A lot more depth to the story, like mystery, great characters, and some surprisingly emotional moments. And then a painful way to see what happens next. Oh well, I hope we're close. Hopefully. Next on my list is Oxenfree, a story about loss, recovery, friendship, and having no idea what's going on throughout the entire game. Actually, that's kind of a trend for all these games that I just don't know what's going on. <laughs> I mean, that's that's why I enjoy them so much. Plus, I love the cool atmosphere. And Oxenfree has atmosphere and no idea what's going on in spades. I love the feel to it, just going through it, being taken on a journey with these characters through their past and through the mysteries and everything going on. And then things get really weird, but definitely fascinating. This game is great. No idea how to describe it, though, but I think that's what makes it great. And who could forget Katana Zero? <laughs> Not me, certainly. Not after I actually streamed for six hours beating it. Yeah, I thought it was like Thanksgiving night. I thought, okay, I'll just have a nice, fun stream. Maybe talk to some people, play a fun game for a couple hours. One, maybe two, if I'm having fun. I started the stream at 8 p.m. I ended it at 2 a.m., Oh boy, like, my brain was not working right at the end of it, which made it really hard to beat the game because, like, I needed to clear mine to do everything right. And yeah, it's a 2D action platformer. Basically, you go around the map cutting people with your sword. It's fun, but it's also quite challenging because if you get hit once, you, you're dead. You have to restart the map. So you have to, like, plan your route, tons of trial and error, and using your power to, like, slow time, gathering every weapon you can, figuring out, like, what enemies can you beat straight forward, which ones do you need to attack more covertly. And yeah, and then those final two bosses. Oh boy, those were not fair, I'll put it that way. And the story, too, it's, it almost makes sense in the end. 
I think. But I love the games that take you on a story where you're not quite sure what's going on until it like all comes together. And even then, it doesn't need to all come together. Just enough of it does, which it did here. This game is fun. Go play it for yourself. I think you'll understand the experience that it gave me. And lastly, we have what is kind of my favorite game I've played this year, and that is Life is Strange. Yeah, it's another weird one. A strange one, in fact. Yeah, I know, bad pun. But it is a great game, sort of, mostly. Depending on how you look at it, though. Actually, just go check out my review. I have so much to say about it, and I did so then. And I think it was a good review, personally. But maybe I'm biased because it's my video. But regardless of any flaws I could point out, I love the experience of playing the game, seeing the world through the eyes of Max and her interactions with all the other characters. It combines a melodramatic but ordinary environment with one filled with fantastical. Max has the power to rewind time, so it's fascinating for her to explore the different possibilities as they unfold based off the choices that her, and as a player, you make. And I love how you have her just trying to get through life, but also uncovering the mysteries of the town and the school. And then things get really crazy. Like the final couple days. Just, wow. That's what I can say about them. The game is such an experience. So yeah, that is my list. Let me know what games you played this year that you enjoyed, what you thought of any of these, or what other games that you think I should play based off this, because I think this gives you an idea of what I like playing, or at least what I like streaming. And yeah, I will stream it if you recommend it, probably. And yeah, if you wanted to check out my reactions to any of these, uh, go check out my gaming channel. The VODs for most of these are there. I don't know, don't think Life is Strange was, because I like had issues with that. But go check out the rest of them. I need to post the Katana Zero ones, actually. And hopefully they'll be linked in the description. But if not, well, remind me, please. Anyway, thank you for watching, for joining me on Day 5 of the 12 Days of Anime. And I will talk to you all next time.